Can we get him to lay down? <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want him to do? Lay down. Lay down. You're okay. We're going to film a video. Look at it. I'm not a fan of this. Really, dude? Okay, you're punching me in the kidney right now. All right, you guys, welcome back to our channel today. Oh my gosh, now he's really jacked up. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? So, today we are doing a video that we mentioned previously. Essentially, we're gonna talk about what it's like to own a Great Pyrenees. Our purpose behind sharing this video is because we have so many different types of animals and we get lots of questions about, do you think that uh, that would be a good fit for our family? This is our situation, that sort of thing. So we figured we were gonna take sort of each animal, we're gonna start with the Great Pyrenees and share basically like some pros, some cons, um, to help you just some make factoids, it. maybe so we'll throw some just some nuggets of knowledge in there as well. Yeah. Now this is obviously subjective, though we can share some some factual information about the breed, personality stuff like that is going to come into play. So it's not going to be like across the board accurate for every Great Pyrenees, but a general feel. A, a general snapshot. Well, I think to start it'd be beneficial to share. He's a, he, technically he's a livestock guardian dog. Yeah. Right. So they are bred to kind of LGDs. look. LGDs. Yeah. To look after herds. Their job is to protect the herd. Normally they'll live outside with the herd and just kind of watch over them and keep them safe. Mm -hmm. They are on the larger size of the dog scale. I think the males can get anywhere from, I want to say 130 to 150 pounds. Azzy back here probably weighs about 110, 120. He's only a year old. So anyways, that's so a little big. bit, yeah, they're, they're a big dog. Lifespan is what, anywhere from eight to 10? Yeah, years. somewhere around there. Yeah, they are, yeah, they are giant cool. dogs, and um, obviously males are slightly larger than females, typically. We met his grandfather when we picked him up, and I have never seen a dog that size in <laughs> real life. When he came through the doors, my mom was with me, and we were both just like, Oh, because no. somebody said this in one of our last videos that he looks sad all the time. He, his grandfather had a very almost like melancholy type of personality. Mm -hmm. And she said that he, the grandfather had been that way since he was a puppy. It was just his nature. Yeah. He was uh, a little calmer, yeah. a little quieter, a little more reserved. And as he, you know, was the same way. And she said, I have a really distinct feeling he's going to be a lot like his grandfather and if it, he yeah. is you're really going to enjoy him because he will settle and be a really mm -hmm. great dog and that's exactly what he we is. found for us the puppy stage was not it wasn't he wasn't wild and crazy mm -mm. um so he's i always think had like a good sensibility he uh, another thing to mention too is naturally these dogs are they're nocturnal they sleep right. a ton during the day, but they were bred to be awake, nocturnal. Guarding. And, exactly, awake at night and watching over herds. So mm -hmm. it's kind of instinctual for them to be up at night. And do what? They bark. Go, they bark a lot. Bark, 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 they bark, bark, bark. a lot. This bark. dog is not an aggressive dog. Right, it's not one that is going to necessarily. Let me rephrase that. Our dog is not an aggressive dog. No, no, no. I can't I speak for every great period. Yeah, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say I think the better word to to cool. use is that it's not that they're aggressive. It's that they're protective. Place. Um. So to their humans, to Place. their people, th they're pretty come gentle. Let's get um, over here. Come on, come on, come on up here. Hey, come here. But if no? they sense something that is a threat, they don't hesitate <laughs> to attack it like run after it, scare it off. They're not afraid. They use their size and their bark as deterrence for other animals because normally when they're fighting off like coyotes or wolves, they're bigger than the animal. And so their size plays up. He's also got this giant. It's he's like he's wearing this, a scarf. This giant thick coat that almost looks like a mane around his neck, which is partly where we got his name from. I mean, he kind of yeah, looks like, like a, a, a white mane. lion. We, we both love C.S. Lewis and the Narnia series. Aslan just made sense. But when you think about what the dog is bred to do, and then you look at the features and how he's built, it, it all start. you kind of start to understand why he is the way he is, why he barks 
a lot, why they don't sleep very much at night, um, why they're so big, why they've got this giant fur mane around their neck, and then they also have dew claws. Yeah. This is one thing that our breeder that we got them from kept it on. A dew claw is like an extra thumb toenail thing. It's high enormous. up on his back paw, but that's intended to help scale like mountain sides, mm -hmm. right? To help them hold on and, and grapple and Give them more climb. traction. If you've not seen them, if you're not used to having a dog with them, it's kind of I, Yeah, I noticed that the first time I saw them, I was like, Holy The reason smokes. that I wanted to point out the barking too is mm -hmm. because again, our purpose in this is to help you. If you live in an apartment, if you live in a neighborhood where there's three feet between your kitchen window and your neighbor's kitchen window, the barking may be problematic. <laughs> Um, so you need to kind of take uh, take stock of where you live. What's the yeah. what's the general mood of your neighbors? Do they not like animals at all? Because it can be a lot. And I mean, he literally terrifies anybody that tries to come up our driveway. We have delivery drivers from various, you know, FedEx, UPS, whatever. Our mailman, like that, will not. They refuse to get out of their cars at. At our house we actually ended up moving a package drop down our driveway where they didn't have to come up because yeah. they were so afraid of him he's just he's big he can enormous. be he can be uh, intimidating like it, that's that's he scared game. me he's before very friendly dog but is he good with kids is he good with yeah but so yeah so that was sort of my point in saying yeah. that while they're not aggressive they're protective and they mm. love their family they're like you know, all in on their people, yep. their family, and protecting them. They are really great family dogs. Relatively gentle, though they don't know their own strength, mm -hmm. and they may plow over a kid to get to the door yeah, if, okay. if there's like, you know, somebody's knocking at the door and they need to go get it bad. They expect you to move out of their way mm -hmm. instead of him move out of your way. Like you'll be walking through the house and if you guys are like playing a game of chicken, he won't move. Right. Like you'll have to go around him. Otherwise you'll just bump into each other. And that's pretty much the way he always, that's pretty much the way he he's always- by the air conditioner. He's always been a little hot. He'll sleep on the floor with no concern for whether or not his place that he's mm -hmm. laying is inconvenient. Um, he'll sleep in front of the fridge when you're cooking dinner so you can't open it. He'll sleep in front of the dishwasher when you want to unload it. Um, he'll sleep in front of the door. And I mean, you literally will you just open pull it. on both doors and he's just like, just can't be bothered to move. Case in point. A child knocked on our bedroom door. He knows it's if some them. of some of our kids are too loud upstairs. If they're talking, it's just it's hilarious. He starts barking. Yeah, yeah. And this isn't something with with the barking again. It's not something that necessarily you can train out of them. This is very instinctual for him. They they really bark a lot and they don't stop until whatever it is they're trying to bark at has subsided. Right. Like until they until they're satisfied. Exactly. That's that's sort of the next thing I would move into is that. Okay. They're stubborn. Good boy. As he, as he sit, down, down, as he. Temper, yes, very much so. Uh, they think they know better than you. And in and some cases, they might right. be right. Like very their true. instincts, their job is to guard. Yeah. Um, and so if they perceive a danger that maybe you don't see or hear or whatever, but they, they mm -hmm. do and they believe it's a danger, even if it's just Postmates delivering your McDonald's. <laughs> that could be a burglar and they're not going to tolerate it or whatever. But so, so it's very difficult to call them off of something. You know, the old expression, he's like a dog with a bone. Mm -hmm. That's sort of their like life mantra is that they do what they want, when they want, how they want. And you, like, I love you, human, but you are dumb and you don't know what's going on. I need to handle this situation. And yes. they very much feel Please. that. Their instincts will trump your training. Um, come on, come on. Which is why they make such it's great guardian high. dogs because their instincts are strong. They're very independent, um, but that independence also comes with the side effect of stubbornness, um, of not necessarily wanting to do things. Speak, speak. <gasps> CR's taught him to speak, which is to go. <laughs> they kind of just have this general like, don't give a rip attitude um and it and it can also again because they're often up patrolling at night 
um, and I feel like they'd sleep lighter at night because they're listening for things. Also means that during the day they sleep a lot and they Come sleep on. hard. Come on. Um, Aslan is known to sleep right across our air conditioning vents. Yeah. Um, where or on any kind of cold tile floor, we got him like a big blue cooling mat. Uh, that's for dogs. I found it at like TJ Maxx. It's actually really cool. I'll try to link something similar below. But it's just this big mat, and once you put pressure on it, it activates it so it cools. Um, so that's been really great. But as far as their coat, um, you know, you are really good about brushing him a lot. They need to be yeah. brushed a lot. They do shed a lot, but I don't find. And I've been asked this a bunch. How do yeah, you not have dog hair all it, over you all the time? I don't. I don't yeah. have dog hair all over I've, me. I've had labs in the past that have shed more. Mm -hmm. Like you get that loose, wiry hair. He has a lot of hair, but he's not a heavy shedder. Like his undercoat is really thick, so you need to take care of it and make sure trying to avoid mats and stuff like that. But you'd be surprised. Like there's a lot of other breeds out there that have a much more of a, of a shedding problem, if you yeah. will. If you take care of his coat, It'll be fine. Um, it's just he's a big dog. I yeah. think I know you have gotten a lot of questions about like cutting his hair. Why we don't get we shave yeah, him? we get lots of questions because we live in the south and it's hot here. It's consistently 90 to 100 degrees pretty much every day, and you always see him hassling. And he, you know, it, I mean, it's hot. But that was something that we did some research about because while I didn't know anybody who shaved their Great Pyrenees, I thought, well, maybe it is something we're supposed to do. So we did some research into it and you're actually not. It's, a, it's very similar. There's just certain animals that need their coat for both uh, insulating and cooling. The um, regulating temperature. Yeah, they need probably. that undercoat and stuff to be able to regulate. Mm -hmm. um, so it's actually ill-advised to shave Great Pyrenees. And they're a light-skinned dog. Like if you were to shave him off, he'd be really fair-skinned and sunburns white, and stuff yeah. are um, what would be a problem for him. Mm -hmm. So long story short, yes, he could probably use a trim maybe going down to the breeder just like cutting it yeah, up a it little could, bit. You but. could definitely trim like around his ears a little bit. He could go to the groomer, I his think you meant. He's got some chaps. Um, that we could, I could. Yeah, he's got like some poopy pants. Um, he, he, we call him Azzy Bombs, right? Oh. Massive, ginormous turds. I call the them Astroids. They look like loaves of bread sometimes, like in the yard. I have mistaken a couple of them for a dead squirrel. If um, you have a small backyard, um, a small ish backyard, you're going to have to poop scoop a lot. Yeah. And it's a. Uh, it's a lot. So the it's a lot. Huge turds. Um, he is also, I call him often, with love, I call him a big oof. Because <laughs> he does have this kind of like, <laughs> and he does what he wants, and then breaks stuff. Oh like, my gosh. So he has yeah. shattered a window because he thought that you were a burglar. He was only a few months old at that time. He'd only been home yeah. a few months. We got him at 11 weeks and he'd been home a few months. He saw you outside, lunged at the window to like put his paws up and bark yeah. and cracked the window. Just busted the window. Um, our front door needs to be replaced. <sighs> we because have French doors at the front. And so we have those little peg things that, that go into the frame at the top and the bottom just shattered the one at the bottom. Oh, that's it's, not even what I'm talking gone. about. I'm talking about him jumping up on the door to bark at things and scratching his yeah. way down. Um, and there's like uh -huh. scratch marks down our door. Um, but, yeah. He's, he, a, he's got a little bit of destructor. He, he does. But not like sitting around eating your furniture, though he will eat hats and shoes if he's mad at you. If he, so in the mornings, he's the first person to wake me up. Every, every morning he will come up and either punch me in the face or headbutt me. He like, he's like an ostrich. Like, give me a little crevice right there. He just likes to bury his nose in a crevice. Normally it's between your right legs between if your you're legs. standing. But that's a little weird. But, um, it's, but, but it's true. But it's we true. always yeah, tell people like, when they come over, they're like, that's what he wants. It's, I don't know. I can't say for certain that it's not about crotch sniffing, but it's really not because, you know, when they're doing that, they're usually going, yeah, and doing no, this, he, he doesn't. He just puts, puts his, head his head. He wants you to take your thighs and take his head and hold it <laughs> so that he doesn't have to. And then he wants you to rub his body. So he wants to go limp yeah. while you rub him. But he sticks his head between your legs <laughs> to get you to do it. 
I don't need to demonstrate. He punched, he's a very, I, don't, I think this is probably with the breed. I have a feeling that- Handsiness. They, yeah, handiness. He will paw and just, when he wants your attention, just Yeah. Just And it's like getting punched in the face by a toaster. I mean, it's just a massive paw. Yeah. Um, so anyways, that's, that's usually the wake up call. But he does not like water or having a bath. No. I don't yeah. know. I need to ask other people who have Great Pyrenees. If any of you guys have Great Pyrenees, let us know in the comments. Do yours like baths? Because mm -hmm. he acts like you're spraying him with acid or something. <laughs> like, he hates it. He runs. I mean, so he, like around here, he's not a, uh, he does not, doesn't live outside with the animals. The llamas are our guardians for our pigs and goats. Mm -hmm. And the plan was always the llamas and Azzy came at the same time. And the plan and hope was always that one of the two of those types of animals would be protectors for the goats and the pigs. Right. Um, and so we weren't sure if the llamas were going to fulfill that role, and they did. They so it's yeah. not been something that we've had to require of Aslan. Most people who have farms, hobby farms, um, their Great Pyrenees live outside and take care of their herds. And that was our initial plan was to maybe have him do that, but it was honestly more of a family protector for right. us. Um, and he's done that role fantastically. He's fit right in there. And naturally, for the, you guys know Lottie, right? Lottie's, uh, they're like, I don't want to say they're arch enemies or anything like that, but there's a command I'll give to Aslan and you know, shoot, like he run, runs, run huh? Lottie back into the barnyard. Um, that's really the only thing we have to keep Lottie over there is mm -hmm. Aslan. Um, so he, he, you know, he'll go in he'll the barnyard and yeah, he'll, do, he'll, he'll do his natural instinctual duties mm -hmm. when it comes to the barnyard animals and keeping the herd together. He does his perimeter walks at night where yes. he likes to, in the evening, he likes to walk around the property. And the other thing that he does is like right about the time that it's just gotten dark, um, he wants to go back outside and he goes around and just starts what seems to me like aimlessly barking. <laughs> at anything, <laughs> but I re but I believe he's he knows what he's doing. He goes to different parts of the yard and barks yeah. out the fence line at different areas, and he does this for like 10 or 15 minutes, and then he comes in, Just and he's like ready to lay down. Basically making his presence known and uh -huh. keeping potential predators away yeah. he's from He's like, if you're planning area. on coming here, that's I right. am here. <laughs> and it's cool. I mean, he just started doing this on his own. So all in all, I would kind of sum it up that if you're thinking about getting a great Pyrenees, if you're thinking about this type of dog for a pet, I would consider um, where the where you live. Do you live in an apartment? Do you live in a townhouse? Mm -hmm. Do you live in a neighborhood where the constant barking could prove to be a big problem? Mm -hmm. um, and, and could even just be a big problem for you. Do you do you have a baby that you don't want the dog waking up constantly? Although your kids mm -hmm. will usually learn to sleep through that sort of thing. <laughs> um, do you also have super young children that are going to be learning to crawl, playing on the floor, down on the floor where they can't mm -hmm. get away? And if the dog comes tearing through the living room, it could. As a mother, these are the things that I think about knowing mm -hmm. Aslan now. He has accidentally knocked over our, you know, our twins who are four now but they were you know three at the time and Benjamin and stuff like that but they're bigger and a little more you know robust now if I had a six month old I think it would be a little mm. bit harder yeah um, and you so you don't have to have a farm to enjoy a dog like a great mm -hmm. Pyrenees because actually, they really are such good family dogs yeah, we've had some high school or college friends that had one for mm -hmm. several years they lived i think in an apartment at the time good with kids they're loyal they're great protectors know instinctually what the breed is wired to do i think that'll help equip you with reasonable expectations on what you can get out of the dog and what the dog can give you um mm -hmm. yeah having realistic expectations about training it, this yeah. isn't the dog that you're going to train to do a bunch of cute Instagram or TikTok tricks. You know no. what I'm saying? Like this isn't the dog that's going to do all the cute little things that you see unless they decide there's They're a good reason to do it. They're smart enough to do it, but they will just no, that's yeah. stupid. Why would I do that? Right. Like, that's I've what... got other things to do right now. <laughs> They're very pragmatic. Very and just, so if it's not, it right. doesn't make sense to them, they're just not going to do it. That's They're right. very very intelligent and that's so, yeah. both a blessing and a curse.
He's been great for our family. Um, I think I, I would definitely recommend one for you guys under the right circumstances. I think um, it has to make sense or make sense for you and your family. But we love we love two Aslan. thumbs up for for Aslan. He's a, he's a good dog. So. Yeah. Well, you guys let us know down below in the comments what animal you would like to see us share about next. Goats, we're, we're gonna do the different breeds of goats. Pigs, chickens, ducks, llamas. horses, llamas, mini horses. Did I forget anything? Rabbits, birds. Maybe we could do the, the mini Aussies. All right, that is it for this video and uh, we'll see you guys again very soon. Azzy, come on, come say goodbye. You are tired, come up, come up here. Just, he's not feeling he's just refusing, no. just outright refusing. Dude, look at it. The look on his face. So you're gonna lay down on me? As he, come on. Aslan, up, place, place. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There he is. There. He, he really is. did not want to do that. No, that's too much effort. <laughs> There's a lot of hesitation in that decision.